and so it's pretty good. Cool. Uh, it's pretty. Uh, well, well, welcome everyone uh, to the first online cyber security seminar of 2022. Um, today we are delighted to welcome Yuan Wu uh, from uh, Institute of Software, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, so Dr. Lu is currently a faculty member and blockchain researcher at the Institute of Software, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences, as I mentioned, and his main research areas are blockchain consensus and decentralized applications, particularly making them secure and also efficient. Many of his recent studies, such as Dumbo, consensus protocols, appear at the flagship venues of security and distributed computing. And he got his PhD degree with best thesis award from the New Jersey Institute of Technology in USA, and his bachelor's degree from Nanka University in China. And today he will talk to us about speaking Dumbo. And uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, introdu introducing, and uh, it's pretty glad for me today to, to share Speedy Dumbo. And this is a joint work uh, with my, uh, with Zhen Liang and uh, my PhD advisor Chang, and my colleagues Bingyong, Jing, and Zhengfen. And here, let me introduce why we need asynchronous BFT consensus um, for blockchain scenarios. We know blockchain actually is pretty fantastic building uh, Primitive. It uh, emulates essentially emulates a decentralized global computer, and through it we can have uh, implement a, pub, a global pub, uh, ideal public ledger, and that means anyone can write transaction into it, and it can always be uh, correctly read because it is content in it can be public verifiable. And also with this fantastic primitive, we can have applications such for smart contract. That means we can have a piece of code that is faithfully executed in the decentralized global computer such that it can even facilitate some trusted conditional payment just like an atomic enforcement contract. And more importantly, and such blockchain can be supposed to, to work in very adversarial environment. That means it can be collectively maintained by a set of mutually distrustful distrust internet nodes. So it can span the pretty wide range of applications like uh, implement some decentralized inf information infrastructure for mission critical applications such as international banking and finance and payment systems. So if we open up the fantastic uh, black box of blockchain, What's behind the magic properties actually are provided by some uh, primitives that we call patenting agreements. We know patenting agreement is pretty traditional uh, primitive that was uh, proposed almost 40 years, not almost, already 40 years ago due to Lambert. And in this primitive, we have some a set of nodes, some nodes, and each of the nodes has maybe have one input value and they're trying to decide one common output. So basically we have three properties for this kind of primitive. Uh, one is we call it agreement. That's pretty straightforward. Everyone has to output the same value. And also we have termination. That means for any honest nodes in the protocol, in the system, it must output after finite times of interaction. And the third one is sometimes ignored by a lot of people is the validity. That means the output value must be something useful. And, and we can imagine that without validity, actually we can have some trivial protocols. Let's, for example, just output zero immediately after the protocol starts. It obviously satisfies agreement because everyone outputs zero and it always satisfies termination because it's no interaction at all. But that protocol does not make any sense because the output value does, does not be something useful. So validity captures these issues and make as output must be something useful. For, for example, in these scenarios, maybe we can have something called strong validity. That means output MX must be one value from M1 or M2 or M3. And last but not least, present here agreement has the ability to torrent some 40 nodes. That means despite some influence on some malicious parties in the system, 
it still can ensure agreement, termination, and validity, uh, as discussed above. So if we uh, consider blockchain scenarios, actually we need to slightly uh, extend the balloting agreement from one shot agreement to from one shot protocol into a multiple shot protocol. That means it's instead of decide one single value, we may have a, a consensus that is continually continuously run and it can agree on an ever growing linear last log of transactions. So basically we can imagine uh, say the figure and we can imagine that everyone has some input, implicit input we call the transaction pool or some people call it the man pool. The man pool may be just a backlog of transactions and they may be disordered, but they finally trying to figure out a unique bookkeeping ledger that is they have a same sequence. And so this property is called consistency. And just to ensure everyone eventually get the same bookkeeping ledger. And second, the property uh, besides consistency is called lamness. This can be analog to uh, the termination property of banking agreement. And this essentially ensures that all valid transactions must eventually appear in the final output log. So basically this is uh, what we expect blockchain consensus. Sometimes we call this atomic broadcast or uh, sometimes we call it state machine replication. If we slightly uh, make the model a little bit complicated by introducing something called plants. Uh, so uh, if we're trying to deploy such protocols uh, into, such protocols into a real world real world scenarios, actually we need to consider a lot of uh, attacks or threats. The first is we may have to capture, we may have to uh, be secure against the malicious nodes. And basically this is simple because we expect the blockchain to stay in a very complex system that is across a different trusted domains maintained by a, a set of different, um, a set of mutually distrusted people and so that there must there it's it's pretty easy. We have a very large attack surface, so that we must tolerate some malicious nodes that may be arbitrary behave in the system. Also, even if we just consider the in-house scenarios that is much more banal, uh, there is still many real-world incidents that say we need bad input tolerance. Uh, here is a here is a very famous example and incidents uh, in maybe two years ago, there is a very famous content delivery network provider called Cloudflare. And it's, uh, it's control plan just to use some consensus called Raft. Raft is only a crash for tolerant protocols. That means it can only tolerate some machines that go outage, not arbitrary misbehave. So um, someday, it has a network switch error, and this error just to trigger a patenting behavior of a, one of its machine. And then this raft consensus gets stopped for almost the six hours. Very unfortunately, nowadays in many permissioned blockchain systems, and a lot of people actually just use, yeah, similar protocols called raft, just the crash for tolerance. And this may raise pretty, serious issues, at least we may have denial of servers, and even at the worst case, we may have double spending. So essentially, uh, we advocate a better thing for tolerance for provides a better security umbrella uh, that, is, can, that is much safer than existing uh, uh, other for tolerant models like the crash for tolerance. And second threat we're trying to consider in the real world deploy scenario of consensus is attacks from the internet. Because what we know internet from the beginning is not designed for security. And it may have tra transmission interruptions, may have pretty large delay, and also has a fluctuating bandwidth. And, and also in almost every day, every time, and we have internet attacks every, um, here and there. And maybe one famous is that we may have prefixed hijacking that can reroute some traffic and isolate some internet nodes. 
at worst case. So basically we may have uh, three different kind of network models to capture uh, the, uh, the, the abilities, the adversarial ability of the internet. Why is uh, we have the strong is the model is synchronized network. That means we assume there exists some a known upper bound of network delay so that a protocol, protocol designer can leverage this upper bound to design the protocol. And one slightly weaker model is called partial synchrony. That means a network has a known but uh, still has an unknown but still bounded delay. And this model is also equivalent to something called eventual synchrony. That means uh, there exists uh, some time we call the global stabilization time. And before this time, the network may be arbitrarily delay the traffic, but after this GST and the network remains to be stable and such that uh, it's just a performed like the synchronous network again. And the most, weak is, uh, the most weak model of network is something called asynchrony. And that means the network delay is completely unknown and also can also be unfixed. And but still the message can be eventually delivered in this model. And um, that's this can be still you may think this is too strong, but uh, let me explain that it actually well captures the, the TCP protocols in in real world. For example, we have node A and node B. We know uh, if we use TCP between these two honest nodes, if node A cannot send uh, a package to node B, node A will always repeat and until what? Until uh, node B can send back the ACK message so that they can make sure, okay, my message is successfully sent. So as long as there are two honest nodes and they always can try to use this kind of TCP protocols to repeat the message to make sure eventually deliver happen. So we can, so we can say the asynchrony network make a minimal assumption on the condition. And actually it is well, it well captures the real world network, a real world internet, even in the worst case. Uh, actually we are uh, facing this kind of different network condition. We can different the different kind of consensus protocols. And the most famous like the uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, Ethereum use a proof of work consensus also called the Nakamoto consensus. It is designed for synchronized network. And we know for this kind of uh, consensus protocols, uh, if um, it's safety and liveness, both of it rely on synchrony assumption. And that means if we're trying to make the protocol be secure in the real world internet, we have to guess a very conser conservative uh, delay upper bound for the protocol. That's actually is a fundamental reason why we must have very long delay in Bitcoin. For example, like a 10 minutes per block, because if we guess the time too small, maybe we have a low confidence in its security there. And also for another kind of protocol we call partial synchronized protocol, like uh, typical examples of PBFT and whole stuff, we know it's lemnis may rely on the synchrony assumption. Uh, they may have inherent denial of servers if the network goes to unstable or become uh, asynchronized. For example, actually we can show in PBFT that uh, uh, if it is deployed in an asynchronized network, we can always make its real change happen. And we know real, real change just to run without output anything useful. So let's recheck the, uh, the model of, uh, in the deployment model of the consensus protocols in the real world. Maybe uh, firstly, we can just delete the crash for tolerant protocols because they are uh, not for the mission critical applications across different trusted domains anyway. And then we may have synchronized, partial synchronized and asynchronized uh, separations for different network condition. And only for the asynchronous presenting for tolerant protocols, such as Honey Badger, Dembo, and et cetera. And they, they can realize lameness and safety 
uh, despite the network condition. So arguably, these kind of protocols are most robust consensus candidates for uh, some adversarial deployment scenarios like the internet. So besides the highest robustness, asynchronous BFD actually has many other benefits. Like uh, first is they are always responsive. That's because they are actually driven by the messages. That means they can progress uh, by simply counting the number of received messages. So that it really does not rely on some guest upper bound of network delay to ensure safety and uh, lameness. So they can closely track the actual network speed. Also, they are pretty easy to implement because as I explained, they are all completely message driven. And so when uh, engineers uh, implement the protocols, they just uh, count the current messages and then move to the next phase. So they can get uh, rid of some manual timeout mechanisms that is used the PBFT and host stuff that is known to be error poor. Okay, so I have introduced so many benefits for asynchronous BFT protocols, but why we say so little of them use them in practice? So basically there is some inherent challenges of design practical asynchronous consensus. One pretty well-known such result is called FLB impossibility. And this is uh, proved by Fisher, Lynch and Patterson. Uh, almost 40 years ago that states, if we're trying to use some deterministic protocols and uh, we cannot solve, we cannot realize lameness and the safety in the asynchronous network, even if there is just one crash failures. Okay, so that sounds very disappointing, right? But the good news is that if we can have some randomized protocols, we can actually get around this impossibility and uh, essentially, maybe there's still some chance we can never terminate, but uh, after the protocol iterates for many times, and we can ensure the probability of termination with a great, with a great values will be, uh, will be one. So that is still good. But we know randomized protocols are actually complicated. They have to essentially, they need to iterate for many times to output coincidentally. Also, and in each iteration, they may invoke some primitive we call it coin tossing. And this is used for faster termination actually. And essentially there are some inherent long existing issues uh, of between uh, push the consensus to be more robustness and make it more efficient. Okay, and actually historical results mostly are in practical, pure theoretical. For example, in crypto 2001, and Kashin et al proposed a protocol that is with cubic communication complexity, which is pretty you know, impractical it's because it's you know, cubic. And and pretty until very recently, like uh, 2016, Miller et al. gave a very famous protocol we call Honey Badger BFT. Uh, we call Honey Badger BFT. And since then, um, it realized some, it realized a linear communication complexity uh, for per output uh, transaction. And since then, um, renewed attentions are quickly gathered and many studies are start to consider whether asynchronous BFT protocols can be, can be used in, in the real world with practical performance. Okay, and here I'm trying to make a quick review about uh, the historical results, some, uh, some uh, cutting edge results. Firstly, let me re review uh, Honey, Badger, uh, Honey Badger BFT. So, and better BFT from beginning, it's uh, trying to use, optimize in all at all the asynchronous common subset protocol. Uh, here I will delay uh, to define asynchronous common subset a little bit. And here we just uh, uh, no notice, okay, in Honey Better BFT, the asynchronous common subset or ACS for short, is just to be reduced to 
a reliable broadcast and asynchronous betting agreements. Here, reliable broadcast is a deterministic broadcast protocols. It can emulate a broadcast the channel by just using point-to-point -point links. So basically, ideally, like uh, okay, oh, it it has a sender in the primitive, and then the sender trying to broadcast a message, for example, M to all parties, and either the all parties receive the same message M, or they receive nothing if the sender is actually malicious. So that is a essentially a physical uh, broadcast channel we can match. And so what is asynchronous balancing agreement, a uh, binary agreement? So asynchronous binary, binary agreement is still a balancing agreement uh, in the, uh, that which can realize liveness and termination and validity in the asynchronous setting, but it only ensures to agree on one single bit, zero or one. And more importantly, we need the output value must come from at least one honest party. For example, if the output is zero, there must be at least one party input zero. And if the output is one, there must be at least one honest party input one. So given uh, RBC and ABA at hand, we can actually uh, has built up a very simple common subset protocol. A common process, so basically a common sub, uh, ACS is still a uh, kind of asynchronous binding agreement, but just with very special validity properties. Its output is no longer a single value, it becomes a set of values. So this side also consistent of at least n minus two f on the party's input. Here n is always the number of parties in a system and f is the number of faults in the system. And basic idea is like, okay, still re recall that we have reliable broadcast, which we call it RPC. And then each party can use RPC to broadcast a batch of transactions for itself. And then we recall that we still have something called asynchronous a binary agreement. So we can use this binary agreement to do what? To vote on whether the reliable broadcast uh, is finished or not finished. So that, so that basically we, we can have at least n minus f a binary agreements return one. That means, okay, we decide okay, at least n minus f RBCs are actually complete, completed, uh, are actually complete so that they can be decided as the final output. So basically this is a very uh, complex design and then we have ACS, asynchronous common subset. How can we build up consensus from it? Pretty simple. We can just lay sequentially run it. And for example, in the first epoch, we run uh, in, to generate the first block, we just run one ACS particles. And after the first ACS particle is executed, and then we go to the next ACS particle to generate another block, et cetera. But honey better BFT still suffer from really large latency due to the slow agreement phase. Because it use what? Use n concurrent ABA protocols. We know each button, uh, asynchronous binding agreement must be some randomized protocol. That means its termination is somewhat randomized as well. And actually it follow it. So at the best case, it can follow geometric distribution for example, we have half chance to terminate in the second round. Maybe we have a fourth chance to, a fourth probability to terminate in a third round and et cetera. And, but if we have any such geometry distributions, uh, the expectation of the, of the largest uh, number of these inconcurrent um, Geometry distributions, it's no longer a constant. It becomes a, a, a it becomes a log n actually. So that can be really large. And we also do some experiment, uh, do some experiment to verify this uh, theoretical analysis. We run honey badger among 36 nodes and check and 
the breakdown latency of RPC and ABAs, we can find that there always exists some very slow ABAs in the system. So given uh, the bottom line of honey better BFT, Dambo protocols trying to answer one question, can we reduce the number of runs in honey better BFT? Uh, for example, can we reduce it from uh, login to constant again? And, and can we reduce the number of API instance from N to constant? And actually the answer is yes. So Dambo protocols use a, a new reduction from ACS to MWBA. So here, here MWB is another notion um, of banning agreement. It still is a banning agreement with agreement and, and termination, but uh, with very special validity properties, which we, I will explain later. But the most thing, most uh, crux point is that the one MWB protocols can only can be built from only maybe two or three ABAs. Thus, we can avoid N ABAs in any better and reduce the running time from a login to a constant. Here I'm trying to explain how the Amber protocols works. So basically the first component of Dambo is uh, something called a provable broadcast. I will call it the PRBC later. So PRBC is still a RBC, but it's stressed by adding a proof. The proof is somewhat invisible to forge and uh, it can be, uh, it can do a testation to prove that the RBC is indeed completed. This uh, is indeed complete. And this actually can be uh, very easy to construct. And we can just uh, uh, maybe like uh, add one round of threshold signature exchange after the RBC protocols. And we can use the threshold signature and to, to, make, uh, uh, to make the proof. And that is simple. And another second component of Denver protocol is trying uh, is a uh, is a uh, MWB sex plan. So MWB is still a BA, but it has something we call external validity. External validity means there exists a predefined global predict uh, that uh, that all all the parties input must satisfy this predict. And also more importantly, the output should also satisfy this predict function. And, and it's done like a binary agreement that we must uh, enforce the output from some honest party. In the MWB protocols, the output can be from malicious party as long as it satisfies the predict function. Okay, here is a side note about uh, why we use external validity because it somewhat seems pretty weak because output can be from malicious party, right? Uh, this is a little bit, this is has some inherent limitations here because if we're trying to enforce strong validity properties uh, in the multiple value agreement, we may have a trouble to face a pretty large number of execution rounds that may be exponentially large in the input length so that uh, we slightly relax the properties and make it can be come from the craft parties. So given a PRBC and MWB in hand, we actually can slightly, uh, we actually can have a new uh, ACS construction. So the first step is that instead of just run RBC, we make it to run PRBC for every party. And so that we can make everyone to wait for n minus f PRBC proofs. And after we have the PRBC proofs, and each party can invoke the MWB protocol, and the MWB protocol is uh, is is finely tuned to have uh, external validity to ensure the output must be uh, a set of values that consists of at least n minus five valid PRBC proofs. So that when the proofs PRBC proof means the PRBC indeed complete. So that we can just use this proof to select it and which PRBC should be put, placed into the final output of the ACS. So basic idea here is like we use one single MVP protocol to solve n binary agreement issues. 
We call that in Honey Better Building, we use one binary agreement to determine whether a PRP, uh, whether a RPC is complete or not complete. It's, and then here we use Dembo use just one MVB to solve the issue. So we can slightly compare the asymptotic complexity of the two particles and we know- uh, Yuan, can I ask you a question before you move on to this slide? Yeah, sure, please. Uh, in the previous slide, uh, th this might be a silly question. But so you, I think you mentioned that you, uh, you have a weaker validity uh, yes. guarantee, right? Yes, yes, yes. That doesn't this cause an issue here? Or like, how, how is that? Uh, kind of like, uh, oh, yeah. how do you get around that uh, weaker uh, guarantee? Oh, you mean you mean the output can come from the property party for the MVB, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, because because here is like uh, recall that in the PRBC we use signatures to uh, we use uh, structural signatures to to add a proof by using structural signatures. So that means what? So that means. As long as we say some signatures uh, or we say proofs for PRBC, the PRBC already must complete. So that even if there are some corrupt parties to propose values to MVPA, it still has to propose valid proofs, aka valid signatures. So that MVPs must return a set of valid signatures. Even if these signatures are proposed by malicious parties, right? Still, they are valid. That means the, the RBC protocols must already complete. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Here are some some typos. Uh, the the tables you switch Dembo and Honey Badger actually. I uh, just realized this, and for Honey Badger protocols, the number of ABA instance is n is O n, and the number of rounds is log n. But for Dembo it reduces it to constant. And also for the concrete performance, we do some experiment to verify their difference. And we can say that the Dembo protocols can realize almost uh, uh, a latency that is only a twentieth of honey measures and the throughput may uh, be four times and eight, nine times in the 64 and 100 internet node scenarios respectively. Okay, here is a brief review about the cutting edge results. And here I'm going to, to say what is the remaining issues. So actually, even given, uh, even if we have some uh, given recent progress, actually we still have asynchronous BRT that is very slow. In particular, we know we have some partial synchronous protocols like whole stuff and PBFT they can also get around the FLP impossibility by, uh, by some extra synchrony assumptions like that we can assume eventual synchrony, right? So, but, so in particular, in particularly when com compare Dembo particles with such partial synchronized particles, we will find it's really slow. Uh, here we do some experiment in the small scale scenarios, like we do it in internet uh, scenarios and uh, uh, the, the local area network scenarios and also in the same machine. And we can see even in the uh, all kinds of scenarios, Dembo is almost uh, at least uh, uh, a magnitude, an order of magnitude slower than hot stuff. So the question remains, can we make it still faster? And to, to say the reason of the bottom, uh, so to say the bottleneck thing that exists in the existing asynchronous protocols, we're trying to slightly recall how we design it. Right? We have two phases actually in the protocols. One phase is to broadcast the transactions. And another phase is to make agreement of the transactions. So in the first phase of broadcast, actually, still we have very high message complexities. That is cubic actually. So this part, okay, once was very small in Honey Badger BFT because you know, Honey Badger's agreement phase is pretty slow, right? But in Dembo, the agreement phase is 
significantly faster because using one M ABA to replace an ABA uh, and binary ABAs uh, and, and binary agreement. So the broadcast phase now becomes sig significantly again. And also the MAB phase is still very costly. It almost taken 80% of the whole latency in the ACS particles. So given these two issues, and we're trying to answer two questions. So one question is, can we make the broadcast phase maybe as more talking later and also concrete, concretely cheaper? And for the second question is like, can we make uh, the MWAB phase concretely faster? So the first question we have a challenge that is we know actually RBC somewhat uh, inherently has quadratic messages. So NRBC is already needs cubic inherently. So that we may need a, a new ACS framework, a different Dembo or Honey Badger. And for the second question, our challenge here is like, uh, all existing MWBs actually are already asymptotically optimal and they only use message, uh, quadratic messages and only use uh, expected constant rounds so that we have to open up their uh, design, open up the big goal to comprise the protocol structures for more concrete, for better concrete efficiency. So here, I'm, I'm trying to explain how we design speeding Dumbo and to solve the previous two questions. So first is uh, how we design a new ACS framework with a cheaper broadcast. So basically we know RBC has inherently uh, quadratic messages, uh, actually which can be proven um, by slightly adapted proof of dollar Richard bound for back of broadcast. We have such proofs in our paper and welcome to raise here. Um, but uh, here I will explain a little bit why we have these issues because RBC, basically we need, it has a property we call totality. Totality means, okay, if any honest nodes can receive from the broadcast channel, all honest parties will eventually receive from the same channel, the uh, same value from the, channel, the broadcast channel. That is pretty obvious and natural. And because it emulates, uh, it needs to emulate a, a, a physical broadcast a channel, right? And, but to lower this kind of message, to lower its message complexity, we somewhat has to adopt a weaker notion. We have to give up totality. Here we use something called the probable broadcast and which we'll call PB later. And PB does not has totality and instead it has something to compensate and it use it lets the sender to produce a lock proof after the broadcast is done so that the proof can attest to that. Okay, um, though I cannot prove to you that all honest parties receive the same value, but at least I can tell you, okay, there are F plus one honest nodes have received the same value already. Okay, and then PB also can be constructed very easily by two, only two rounds. The first round, the sender multicast the value to all parties, and then each one will return a signature on the value to a sender. And the sender just wait for n minus f such as signatures, and it can just produce such a log proof by puts the signatures together. And then we can easily to use PB to replace PRBCs in Dumbo framework. And here it's pretty, similar, but one different thing is like, because we call that we currently use a very, uh, use a weaker broadcast, right? Though so it's cheaper, and but, but so we cannot ensure all honest parties to receive the value, same value from PB, even if we say the PB is proof, so that we have to add some recovery phase to the MWB particles. So that if someone uh, res, uh, has to um, output, a value that it's supposed to receive from some PB, but it missed to get it. It can still ask some other parties to get it back. So the big basic idea and the intuition of recovery is very simple because we know a PB proof attests that at least F plus one on its parties should have received the same value from PB, right? So 
if a party means something, for example, here, uh, PB1, uh, node one uh, means the, the value from PB2. And it, it can just ask all nodes, okay, I missed this PB output. So that can you please give it to me? And then all parties returns um, M2, actually it's PB2's output right, to, PP, to node one. And node one just to count, count, just count F plus one, the same message too, and it can just, uh, okay, this message two must be the right PB2's output because there are F plus one nodes. Uh, there are one more nodes. There are one nodes out of this receiving messages must from all these parties. But this trivial idea has some clearly, clearly issues because it will trigger communication blow up. So, in speedy demo, we use um, a well-known trick uh, here um, to facilitate a recovery phase. Here we use uh, Reedy Solomon encode, uh, Reedy Solomon method to encode the output of the PB protocols. For example, here we encoded M2 into uh, a series of uh, a lot of fragments and each node only sends uh, the corresponding fragment to the to the party who is re requested the PB2's output. Here, for example, the, the node two only returns the Merkle root, uh, uh, only returns the, the second frag fragment, and the node n only returns the, the nth fragment of the encoded M2. But also we need the node one can have some mechanisms to de detect which fragments are right fragments yeah, so that it can decode, right? So here we use a Merkle tree to commit all the encoded uh, encoded uh, frag, uh, message fragments so that the, the node one can just count uh, which message have the same Merkle root and also have the, a valid corresponding Merkle proof. And it can just use this F plus one messages with the same Merkle root to decode the correct uh, PB out, PB2's output, which will save, um, which will solve the issue of the communication blob in the possible recovery phase. Um, you know, can I just ask you a question here? Yeah, sure, of course. So in, in the previous slides, you, uh, you are trying to reduce the communication complexity of the reliable broadcast by using a simple version where the guarantee is weaker, namely yes, on yes. plus one nodes would um, be having this guaranteed uh, delivery so that at least one on the node would receive uh, the information of you know this this view or of this session. Um, then other on this node could recover by asking uh, you know, the, the information from other F plus one on its nodes and wait yes. for those messages. But the problem here um, is that because in the previous session, only F plus one nodes are guaranteed to receive the data, right? Yes. Um, and because there are F, so if, uh, you know, if some of the uh, nodes within this F plus one nodes do not collaborate then would that be uh, forming a problem such that there is no F plus one messages can be received by the node who is trying to recover at the first place? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Actually here you can see uh, we let the proof actually is a set of N minus F signatures. And I, oh, yeah. and one thing I have to say is that our fault tolerance is only one third, not one half. I, I see. So the uh, the approval uh, broadcast would uh, no, but it says that at least F plus one on its nodes receive the same value, right? Exactly, you, exactly. Uh, F plus one on its node. Ah, oh, I see. F plus one on its nodes. Sorry. Yeah, F plus you one on its node, not just right, F right, plus right. one any nodes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense to me. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay. So let's go back and then we can compare the complexities here and we can see 
uh, we reduce the message complexity of Hannah Badger and Gamble by an order of a uh, uh, um, big o, uh, uh, o of n order. And also we can reduce the communication complexity uh, slightly concretely in some optimistic case. Uh, for example, in the best case, if the recovery never happened and we can save up to um, almost uh, 67 of the total communication complexities. Even at the worst case, all parties have to do some uh, recovery and still it has the same concrete like, communication complexity to Dembo and Hank Badger. Okay, then, okay, previously we uh, proposed a new ACS framework to replace RBC by some cheaper broadcast, right? And right now, by the way, our key issue remains here. And how to, that is, how can we to obtain concretely faster MWB particles? That's how will be our core questions here because it is a dominating factor in the whole ACS particles. It almost takes 80% of the whole uh, latency in the ACS, as we can see. This actually is pretty challenged because all existing MWB particles actually has some type structure. Here I just give a, a example to give you a feeling how complicated the existing MWB protocols actually are. And I gave the Abraham et al's design in page 19. And here is, yeah, it's really complicated. And I will try to make it very uh, brief. And each node just to use uh, four PB protocols to deliver on. Recall that PB is a probable broadcast, right? So use four PB protocols so they can deliver three proofs. And one is called key, and one is called lock, and one is called commit. And after the three PBs, they can have some uh, leader, random leader election phase. And so that they elect one um, sender. And then they're trying to use a view change to exchange, okay, to exchange elected parties uh, PB instance proofs so that they can um, maybe decide if if some parties say, okay, the commit proof of the elected uh, parties, okay, th they are okay to output here. And uh, if someone is commit, so that means at least F plus one, all these parties have lock proofs. So they, after a change, all parties have the lock proofs. That means, okay, they will not change the value in the future iteration because it's lock by literally it means, okay, the, the, the value is locked here. And also maybe we have some chance that his somebody, some, some party is falsely locked because, okay, maybe no party output at all, but I was locked myself. So that we use a key proof to ensure determination. That means still, okay, in some cases, some nodes, even it is locked, if some honest party ensure, okay, I will use the key to unlock you and the party will try to, okay, I will not stick it with the, the ridiculous, ridiculous output value anymore because nobody committed at all. I can make sure that because I see enough key value, key proofs. And it actually is uh, very complicated. I will stop here to, 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 to introduce more. I just gave you a feeling how complicated it is. And actually our motivation, our, uh, technique here is trying to, our starting point maybe from the Abraham et al's particle and start one motivation here, we use two PBs uh, to, to replace four PBs. That just immediately save four rounds for us. But as I introduced, every proof in uh, Abraham et al's particle actually has its, has, has, uh, has its effects so that if we replace two, uh, PBs, we, we lost the two proofs so that we may immediately have troubles in termination and the agreement. And so that we introduce two voting phase after the random leader election. After the two uh, random leader election, we may have three kinds of proofs. One is called a finish, one is called yes, and one is called no. All these proofs are generated by structural signatures. And basic idea is here is like, uh, if someone outputs, that means it must have say a finished proof after the, the two voting phase. And the finished proof is a threshold signature 
that implies that it's infeasible for any party to compute a no proof. And if no one can compute a no proof, that further implies that, okay, at least some party, uh, that, that means, okay, all honest parties and all, all parties, not just the restricted to honest, all parties can only compute yes proof in the next iteration, or it must immediately output here because it's a save finish proof. Uh, okay, maybe this security intuition is not still not very straightforward. <laughs> maybe we can talk offline about this. It's still a little bit complicated. And to further reduce, uh, to further compress, uh, compress the particle structure, then we introduce an optimistic shortcut for termination. Our observation is that um, after random leader election, at some uh, shortcut condition case that, uh, that is like, we recall that we have two PBs, right? Lock is the proof of the first PB particle, and we still have a proof of a second PB particle. And if I see the second PB proof of the elected sender, I actually, it's okay. And it's very secured for me to immediately output without going to, uh, the, 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 without going to the two voting phase at all. Uh, here we, we, we do a proof that if the shortcut condition is met, that means it must be infeasible to anyone to compute a no proof. And recall that if there is no proof, the elected PB is out, uh, input must be output anyway, because uh, because because that means only yes proof is a valid proof for the next iteration, right? And yes proof is a stressful signature for the current PB's uh, input value. So then this input will not change anymore. But uh, if you, but one may wonder that if some party immediately stopped uh, without going to without going to the voting phase, maybe the voting phase never completed for other honest parties, right? So that here before the honest parties to term to immediately terminate, we also let it to broadcast a, a, a new message, a message because um, just to broadcast the one message, the message con contains the second the PBs approve some we call it a finish proof, and this finish proof can convince other parties to eventually output, even if uh, they do not uh, terminate in the leader uh, the, the the later voting phase. Okay, so in sum, we give uh, we do we do two uh, uh, things to comprise and maybe structure. The first is to we securely remove two PBs. Uh, in the MAB protocol. And also we introduce an optimistic shortcut. And this will improve our run complexity significantly. For example, in the worst case, under influence of the adversary, a speedy MAB can save about eight rounds. And also even at, at the best case, that means there's no protocol iteration and the network is synchronized and there is no fault and speedy MAB can save at least six rounds uh, in comparison to the state of the art. Then we also do a very extensive experiment in the wet area network. We deploy up to 150 servers uh, in 15 Amazon's uh, AWS regions in five different continents here. And here we can check um, for broadcasts well, firstly, we check the, uh, uh, the effect of our uh, cheaper broadcast primitive. For example, we can see that for moderately large scale, for example, maybe larger than 100, and the basic latencies uh, of our new ACS framework is much, much smaller than used RBCs. That actually re uh, reflects our better message complexity, uh, which we see when order of a big O n. And also for all scales, we can find the throughput is improved greatly, uh, which is the left figure shows. 
and almost nearly doubled for all scales. That actually reflects our uh, saving in the concretely communication complexity of the exchange bits uh, in the optimistic case. Also, and then we try to compare our uh, a new MVB protocols with the existing MVB designs. And here we can see for all moderate large system and a speedy MVB is almost the two times faster than existing designs. And finally, we test uh, putting all our new techniques together and we can have a speedy demo and we, try, we compare it to the Dembo protocols. We can see for all tested scales from four to 150 nodes, the throughput is almost doubled. And for some moderately small nodes like a four to 82, our uh, basic latency of the protocols is almost half. Okay, here is a take summary of the talk. And here we present the speedy Dembo. And in comparison with Dembo and Honey Better protocols, a speedy Dembo use a cheaper uh, broadcast primitive. We call it uh, provable broadcast. The message complexity is reduced by a big O and other, and it's actually realized a lower bound of uh, asynchronous common subset. And the number of exchange of the bits is also reduced to only 33rd of the. Uh, uh, existing particles in the optimistic cases. And also a second merit is we design a more compact MVB particles and we call it the speeding MVB. The, ex the expected number uh, of interacting rounds in speedy MVB is reduced to only 12 or less. And the speedy MVB is two times faster than existing MVB particles uh, due to our experiment in the Y setting, uh, in the Y setting. And also for the tested scales up to 150 nodes, our throughput is almost doubled in comparison with Dembo and also the basic latency is almost halved. And thank you so much for your attention. Any questions? Um, thank you very much, Yuan, for your very interesting talk. Anyone has any questions? Uh, there is a question from Ren Chong in the chat. Ah, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Uh, yeah, the question is what is the difference between the ACS and an asynchronous vector consensus protocol? Actually, there is no too much difference between the two notions. I guess just the proposal by different people and use different name. Okay. Uh, any other junction? Did you have a question? Well, I have several. <laughs> so I'm trying to see <laughs> anyone else has a question before I push those those questions. <laughs> May, maybe I can ask a, a question first, which is more high level question. So I'm not a specialist in this type of protocol. So I was was wondering, maybe I missed it somehow, where where the randomness is actually coming from. So who is Kind of controlling that randomness that you need for it to work is actually random. Oh, that's a very good question. Oops. Seems better no, to lost him. the video. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can turn off your videos because I think he's bent with. Yeah, maybe I turn off again. Um, you on? We can't hear you at the moment. Oh, you can hear me. Ah, yeah, now we can hear you. Now we can hear you. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, here is, uh, this is a very good question. I can be yeah, 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 we this, can hear you, go ahead. This actually is a very good question. And in our, uh, in our protocols, we use a uh, non-interactive threshold signature to generate the, uh, to do the coin tossing. And, but, uh, you know, non-interactive threshold signature need uh, some uh, setup. And uh, maybe some, sometimes we may need a DKG distribu distributed key generation like a DKG, uh, or we can assume a trusted dealer and to do, to do a Shamir secret sharing so that, uh, 
so that use this we can let them to do like a threshold version of BRS signatures. And so that we put the uh, threshold version of BRS signature into a hash function, which is a random article, and we can get a, a common randomness for all people. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But it can create a bit of more overhead or have you kind of considered this? Uh, there are a lot of uh, recent work we are trying to do. One, actually there are a few co-kind of work. Uh, one is ours and trying to resolve the issue without uh, some, such strong assumptions. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And uh, yeah, basically like, uh, for example, there are very, there are very classic study uh, by Rand Kennedy and the Taylor Rubin in a uh, stock 1993, and some the title should be uh, fast terminating asynchronous balancing protocols. And they initial uh, they initiate the study of how to do asynchronous coin tossing uh, without uh, strong setups like uh, Shamir secret sharing. And the complete the protocol actually is complicated. They use a lot of asynchronous uh, verifiable secret sharing, mm. and then. Uh, somewhat you can have uh, uh, a common coin and after a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's quite That's a another topic actually. Communication, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. Good question actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think since we are running out of time, maybe Jiangshan, you can choose your uh, best question <laughs> and then ask them. <laughs> And then right, maybe you can right. discuss the other ones offline. Yeah, sure. So thanks for the excellent talk. Uh, quite interesting Thank insights you. on designing the asynchronous BFT. So uh, from my understanding, the current uh, complexity in terms of the you know number of authenticators, the number of messages, and mm -hmm. also the number of phase, they are still kind of larger than uh, the hot stuff protocol, right? Or the pipeline. Uh, hot stuff, uh, yeah, the cheap yeah. version. Uh, however, the the performance shows uh, you know a different result, which is quite counterintuitive. <laughs> so can you provide some intuition behind of the uh, yeah, excellent yeah. report? Yeah, actually, that's yeah, pretty good question. Uh, I think you mean the performance more like a throughput, right? Yes, yes. In terms yeah, of the latency the part, for latency part, the whole stuff maybe is still much better. And currently our understanding is that the throughput improves throughput in consensus protocols may be a trivial question, but the latency may be non-trivial actually. And why the throughput is a trivial question actually is like we can always decouple broadcast and the consensus. And that I means, see. yeah, yeah, yeah. the same trick, actually the same trick can be applied to hot stuff. For example, here we use every party to broadcast the, its own transaction batch, right? So that mm -hmm. can intuitively better utilize all bandwidth resources. But in hot stuff, if we do if we do not do any effort and and just run it as it is, there is only the the the, the leader is doing the transaction dissemin dissemination part. So this just this means we have a lot of available bandwidth resources that's not used at all. But uh, actually the same trick actually can be adapted to hot stuff and we can make all people to broadcast. We can, yeah. uh, then, and then we can just uh, use the hot stuff itself to, to do what? To, to agreement on some proofs or we call the quorum certificate of the broadcast so that to make sure they can be recovered. Right? Mm -hmm. And actually we, in uh, Tucson and a 20 poach, maybe we have some uh, similar work already presented idea. Right, this seems to me a bit similar to what they recently called the leaderless consensus, right? Essentially we yeah, increase yeah, yeah, yeah. the number of parallel sessions to to have a better concurrency. Uh, yes, yes, yes. The yes. final agreement on a batch of proposals to, you know, to have a larger block size to occupy yes, all yes. the available bandwidth. Exactly, exactly, so this, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I see. Exactly. I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you, Yuan, for your very interesting talk.
And yeah, if anyone would like to subscribe to the emails for the events, you can go to website uh, that's given on the screen and subscribe for updates. And you can also check out our past uh, and future seminars and hope to see everyone in the next seminar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.